اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صل و سلم علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد افضل صلواتکا بعدن معلوماتکا و بارک و سلم و سلی علیہ ظلللنا علیکم الغمام آئین وی شیڈے ڈور یو ویت کلاوڈز وانزلنا علیکم الملن آئین وی سنٹ ڈاؤن آلیو ان من سو دیٹ واس سویٹ گم دیٹ واس سویٹ گم وانزلنا علیکم الملن وصلوا ان دی کویلز دیٹ واس ای ٹائپ آف برڈ کویل دی ٹائپ آف برڈ یس and they were not in need of hunting them. Yes, they were catching them on roast. Yes, and the sweet gums that was hanging with the trunk of the trees, with the branches of the trees, with the leaves of the trees, the small bushes. Yes, that also on the ground. Yes, that was just like grains, sweet. So human being, they need two types of thing. Number one, meat. Number two, carbohydrate. Yes. So both were available for no price. وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَا كُلُوا مِنْ تَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Eat of the good lawful things. رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وِيَوْ پروائیڈِدْ يُوْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا and they did not wrong us walakil kanu anfusam yazlimun but they wronged themselves by disobedience they were doing wrong to themselves they were not doing wrong to us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they were not causing me any trouble they were bringing trouble on themselves got it so in Sinai desert they were in need of three things number one food almanu wa salwa Number two, shed, clouds was there. And number three, water. So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that hit the rock with your staff. And he did it. Fan fajarat min husna ta asharat aayna. So 12 fountains were gushing out of it, are gushing forth. For every tribe, there was a reserved fountain. Yes. The Jew people and their tribes were that much united that they were not taking water from the same fountain. They said, no, everybody or every tribe needs its own fountain. Professor, got it. In one way or the other, that was good. Because in tribal system, disputes happen for no reason. For minute and small and petty issues. Yes, why you went before me? Yes, and actually the tribal feud is there. Because of tribal feud, they are looking for some excuses. They are looking for some excuses to create a problem to the other tribe. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them 12 fountains that every tribe should go to their own fountain. Got it? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا And remember when we said اُدْخُلُوا هَذِ الْقَنِيَا Enter this town, Jerusalem. Which town? Jerusalem. فَكُلُوا مِنْ هَا سُو اِتْ بَاؤْنْتِفُلِ دِيَرْ فَرَامْ خَيْسُ شَيْتُمْ وِيَرْأَيْوَرْ يُو وَانْتْ رَغَدًا وِتْ پْلَيْجَرْ اِنْ دِلَائِتْ وَدْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا اِنْ اِنْتَرْ دِي گَيْتْ اِنْ پْرَاسْتَرَيْشَنْ So either in prostration mean that make prostration and then crawl towards that city or that town. Or another one, the moment you enter to the main gate of Jerusalem, so prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Got it? وَدْخُلُ الْبَابَا And enter the gate of Jerusalem Sujjadan Frustrating to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala وَقُولُ And say حِتَّةٌ حَتْ Munir حَتْ Literal meaning is reduce Literal meaning is reduce But when you put this word with khataya Mistake and sins then it means forgiveness. Anta hutta anna khatayana. It doesn't mean reduce our mistake and reduce our sins. Reduce our sin. If these, if these are 20 sins, so make it 10. Or make it 5. 
Yes, buy one, get one free. No, this is not the case. Hattul hataya means forgive our sins. وَقُولُوا اِنْ سَيْ حِتَّةٌ فَارْجِوَسْ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَتْعَيَاكُمْ So we will forgive you your sins. وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُوسِنِينَ And we will increase for the good doers their reward. فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا But those who did wrong. بَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا They changed the word. قَوْلًا غَيْرًا لَذِي From that which had been told to them for another word. So they were told to say حِتَّةٌ What? حِتَّةٌ So they put one noon or n in between. So they used to say حِنْتَةٌ Yes, they were making a fun of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to say what? حِتَّةٌ Forgive us. So they used to say, Hintatun, wheat flour. Yes, we need what? Wheat flour to make a cake of that and bread of that. So they were joking with Allah. What type of people they were? Yes, making a fun of the words of Allah. Got it? فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا So those who did wrong بَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا They changed the word غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ From that which had been told to them for another word فَانْزَلْنَا سُوَيْ سَنْتْ عَلَى الَّذِينَ Upon those ظَلَمُوا did wrong رِجْزَمْ مِنَ السَّمَائِ A punishment from the heavens بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Because of their rebelling against Allah Zubi because of this disobedience, their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is narrated by Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala an, that plague was a type of punishment for these people. Plague, which is called ta'un. Which is called? This is epidemic disease. It is what? Epidemic disease. فَانزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَائِ So we sent upon the wrongdoers a punishment from the heavens. بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Because of their rebelling against Allah's obedience. وَيَزِسْتَ سْقَامُوا سَالِقَوْمِهِ And that is another favor of Allah. And remember when Musa alayhi salatu wa salam is tasqa Musa ala qawmi he asked water for his people from Allah. Faqulna so we said idrib bi'asaka al-hajar strike the stone with your staff. S-T-A-F-F. Staff means stick. So we said idrib strike or hit bi'asaka with your staff al-hajar dharak fal-fajarat. مِنْ حُسْنَةَ شَرَةَ غِيْنَا دِنْ قَشْفُورْ There from twelve springs of water. Twelve springs of water. قَدْ عَلِمَ كُلُّ أُنَاسِمْ نَشْرَبَوْا Each group of people, mean each tribe. Each group of people knew its own place for water. كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا And we said, Eat and drink mir riskil lai of that which Allah has provided. Wala taas of fillers im of sidin and making no mischief on the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not do any corruption. Fasad mean corruption. So corruption is a different thing. Yes, in finance there is corruption. In akhlaqiyat and character there is the corruption. Everything has its own way of corruption and that is fasad. That is what? That is fasad. وَلَا تَعْصَوْ فِي الْأَرْزِ مُفْسِدِينَ And do not act corruptly making mischief on the earth. وَإِذْ قُلْتُ مَنْ Remember when you said, يَا مُوسَى O مُوسَى لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَى تَغَامٍ وَاحِدٍ We cannot endeavor one kind of food. We cannot carry it. Yes, if you will eat kebab every day, you will become fed up. Yes, so you will be looking for some spinach or for some beans, or for some dough. Yes. After a lot of kebab, Salim Jan, what we are looking for? Dough, yes. 
وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ اَنْدِ مِمْبَرْ وَنْ يُو سَيْدْ اَوْ مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَسْبِرَىٰ وَلَا تَعَامِمْ وَاحِدٍ وِي كَنَّاتْ اِنْدِوَرْ وَلْ كَنْدَا فُودْ فَدْغُ لَنَا رَبَّكَا سُو اِنْوَوْكْ يُوَرْ لَاتْ فَارَسْ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا تُو بْرِنْغْ فُورْتْ فَارَسْ مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ آبْدِتْ وِجْدْ دَ أَرْتْ گْرُوز وَتْ دَ أَرْتْ گْرُوز مِمْ بَقْلِعَا اِتْس هَرْبْ اَرْ وَيْجِتَيْشَن بَقْلْ مِن هَرْبْز اَرْ وَيْجِتَيْشَن وَقِسَّاءِ هَا اِنْ اِتْس كُوْكَمْبَر قِسَّاء مِن كُوْكَمْبَر اَنْ اِتْس كُوْكَمْبَر وَفُومِعَا اَنْ اِتْس گَارْلِك اِتْس فوم has two meaning in Arabic language garlic and wheat both wa fume ha and garlic are wheat wa hadasiya and its lentils yes beans lentils are a type peas yes what they call pea yes peas and its lentils wa basaliya and its onions qala so musa alayhi salam said atastabdiluna allazi أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي Would you exchange that هُوَ خَيْرٌ which is better بِالَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى for that which is lower So you are exchanging a better thing for a lower one means the sweet gum and the quails and you are exchanging that for onion, garlic, vegetation etc. So now what? اِحِبِتُو مِسْرًا Now look, that better one was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a favor to the children of Israel. As a favor to the children. So they were doing nothing to have that man and salwa. Yes, they were not doing any labor, any farming, any watering, any sprinklers or some, nothing. Yes, early in the morning they used to wake up, yes, collecting that sweet gum and catching these birds and cutting it and Roasting. Got it? Doing nothing. But when they ask for something, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for that you have to work. For that you have to work. But as you are living in desert, and desert is not a cultivated area, it cannot grow that. It cannot grow that. So you have to go to Delta, not airline. Yes. You have to go to Delta. Yes? Delta is a very cultivated area in between two branches of river. In between two branches of? Because when the flood comes, yes, so the flood water, it cultivate it. Professor, is it? I am a farmer, that's why I know. Yes, and that's why I'm trying to go back and to start farming. What do you think, Mr. Ahmad? Do you like farming? Yes, and you have seen our area, very green, lot of water, every type of crop. Yes, and that is good. But here the people are thinking of us that we are janitors. <laughs> janitor is also human, he is respectable. But people are looking at janitor just like a humiliated guy. Yes, we are not. Yes, we are middle class people, we can farm and we can cultivate and things like that. Professor, do you want to do farming or not? Ranch. But not the one in Texas. <clears throat> قَالَ هِي سَدَ تَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي وَعَدْنَا Would you exchange for a good one, the lower one? اِحْبِتُو مِسْرًا So go you down to any town. Any town means in Delta. You can go in that area, close to any town. Close to? اِحْبِتُو Because people used to build up towns close to Delta or cultivated area. Yes. People are looking to build up what? The towns are close to what? To cultivated area. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, you have to go to any town. Ebitu misran go down to any town. Fa inna lakum ma saltum and you shall find what you want. Wa zuribat alayhimu zilla and they were covered with humiliation wal maskana and misery. Wa ba'u bi ghadabim min Allah and they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ذالک بانهم ذات واس بکاس بین لو کانو یکفرونا بکاس دی یوز ٹو ڈسپلیو بی آیات اللہ ان دی آیات آف اللہ و یقتلون النبیین آئیت دی یوز ٹو کل دی پرافٹس بغیر الحق کے رانگ فلی ذالک بی ما غصو و کانو یات دون دی ٹواز بی کاز دی ڈس اوبیڈ اینڈ یوز ٹو ٹرانسگرس دی باؤنڈز آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی انہا اللذین آویرے لے دوزو ڈس بلیوڈ واللذین آدو اینڈ دوزو آر جوز والنصارا اینڈ کرسٹینز والسابینا اینڈ سیبینز اینڈ سیبینز سو سیبین ایکچولی دی ور موحدین Believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they used to live in Musal, in Iraq. And they used to say, La ilaha illallah. And they were believing in the Psalms of David. But they were neither Jews nor Christian, but Muahideen. They were what? Muahideen, believing in the oneness of Allah. So now, in the end of ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will have their reward on the day of judgment. But nobody may get confused by this ayah. No, my, nobody may get confused by this ayah. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further elaborated that. That by Jew, Christian and Sabian, I do mean those who believed in Allah and in the day of judgment. The way their messenger told them. The way... Their messenger told them, and as I do mention time and again, that belief in Allah and day of judgment means all other beliefs are included there. Because belief starts with belief in Allah and completes with belief in the day of judgment. But right in between there are other beliefs and they are meant in belief. If somebody will say, oh, I believe in Allah and day of judgment. Yes, but what about angel? Mm. Yes, what about revealed book? Mm. And what about the messengers? So he's not a Muslim. His belief in Allah is not a proper belief. His belief in the day of judgment is not. Because when you believe in Allah, you have to believe in every single word of Allah. You have to believe in every single word of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says believe in angels. And you do not. Believe in taqdeer. And you do not. Believe in all the messengers. And you do not. Believe in all the scriptures. And you do not. Got it? So your belief in Allah is no belief in Allah. Your belief in Allah is? Inna allazina virili those amanu bili wallazina or and those hadu are Jews wal nasara and Christian was sabi'ina and they are sabi'an. Man amana billahi means that one who believed in Allah wal yawmil akhiri and in the last day wa amila salihan and practice righteous good deed falahu majruhum for them there will be their reward in the Rabbim with their Lord wala khawfun alim on them there shall be no fear wala hum yahzanun nor shall they grieve on the day of judgment they will never having any fear in this world and they will not be having any grief in the hereafter. Fear here and grief there. Fear here and grief there. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا Say Munir, وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Allah says those who believed strongly in Allah, yes, and they are steadfast in that belief. They are steadfast in that belief. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be approaching them, in this life even. Yes, and what will be the approach of angels? أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا No fear in this world, no grief in the hereafter. No fear in this world and no grief in the hereafter. So if somebody will show stability, so he will be having the angel. Angel will console him in difficult time. Angel will bring him with tranquil in difficult time. فَلَهُمْ مَجْرُمْ عِلْدَ رَبِّهِمْ فَارْدِمْ There will be their reward with their lords وَلَا خَوْفُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ 
and there will be no fear on them walam yahzanun nar shall they grief wa yad khazna misaqakum and remember o children of israel akhazna misaqakum when we took your promise and your covenant wa rafana fuqakum tur and we raised up you the mount of tur so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look he raised the mount of tur and made it just like a shed over them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them will you believe in torah they say of course we will of course we will allah put it back but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the moment i put it back they broke their promise they broke their promise why the khazna misaqakum and remember when we took your covenant wa rafana fawqakum tur and we raised above you the mount of tur khudhu ma atainakum hold fast to that which we have given you wa dhkuru ma fi and remember that which is there in la'allakum tattaqun so you may become muttaqin in pious summata walle tum dil after the to turn away mim baad zalik after the falo la fazlullah alaykum he did not be in for the grace wa rahmat and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you la kuntum min al khasirin indeed you would have been among the losers wa laqad alimtum al ladina in indeed you knew those amongst you atadaw milkum transgressed in the matter of the sabbath in the matter of sabbath sabbath being saturday and they call it shabbat the jews call it shabbat yes in arabic that is called sabbath yes saturday so on saturday fishing was forbidden for them yes so they made a strategy they made Mr. As a test, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala used to bring lot of fish, cover the whole ocean, cover the surface of the whole ocean, and they were in love with fish. They were in oh, look at that fish. What should be done? Yes. So they made a strategy. They made water channels from the ocean, and a big ponds here and there and that side and that side. So on Saturday, they used to bring water there from that. We are not fishing. because fishing is prohibited fishing is prohibited when water was flowing towards the pond so the fish were coming as well so on sunday they used to hunt those fishes there in the pond got it so any strategy towards haram that is haram a strategy towards haram that is haram got it ثم تولى ولقد علمتم الذين ان انديد يو نو دوز امنغس يو اتدو منكم ترانسجس ان دي ميتر اوف ذا سبت فقلنا لهم سو وي سيد تو ذيم كونو قردت الخاسين بيو بيو منكيز ديسبايزد اند ريجكتد بيو منكيز اور ابس ديسبايزد اند ريجكتد سو ذير فيسز غوت ترانسفورمد تو ذا فيسز اوف منكيز to the faces of monkeys and then they died on third day such like people they died fajalna halaka alalli ma bayna yadaya so we made this punishment an example to their own people of their time wa ma khalfa and to succeeding generation wa mauizatan lil muttaqin as a sincere advice to the pious people why the qala musa and remember when musa said the qawmi to his people in allah yamurukum in in allah indeed allah yamurukum he commands you ah uh, in allah yamurukum indeed allah commands you and tasbahu baqara to slaughter a cow so why they were ordered to slaughter a cow Yes in last lecture we mentioned that they were in love with cow because of the egyptian culture because the people of egypt they used to worship cow they used to worship cow and the children of israel they got that culture there from and they got impressed by that culture yes so they were giving such like concept to the cow so allah subhanahu wa taala ordered them to slaughter a cow what to slaughter a cow yes to tell them that this is not god god could not be slaughtered god could not be slaughtered number 1 and if somebody is approaching god in such a way god can protect himself 
Yes. So if it got slaughtered, it means that he is not God then. It means then he is not. In Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا If in the heaven and the earth there were more than one God, there were more than one God, they would have disputed each other for, for sure. Because that is nature. That is what? That is nature pulling and pushing, fighting. For what? For grabbing more and more area, grabbing power or things like that. Yes? So for sure, there will be a fight going on between gods. Between gods. And the ultimate result of a fight is that one will get into success and another one will get defeated. Another will get defeated. And God could never be defeated. So the defeated one will not be God. The ultimate result is that God is only one. The one who got successful. Now you got it? That's the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about his tawheed and his oneness. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ And remember when Musa said لِقَوْ مِي to his people إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِنْدِيدْ أَلَّا يَا مُرُكُمْ Because Mufassirin they have related another story that some guy his name was Amil his name was Amil and he got killed by his cousins because he did not have any son and daughter to inherit him and he was a very wealthy man having lot of property so they killed him for his property and then they came to Musa alayhi salatu was salam somebody killed our cousin yes so they were filing a report they were what? lodging a report so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa that no yes just tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to slaughter a cow and you will take the dead body of that uh, Amil with the, that uh, dead cow yes he will come to life once again for a while and he will tell us that who killed him. He will tell us that who killed him. That's what the Mufassirin said. Our Shaykh Shaykh Mawlana Hussain Ali, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he said these are two different stories. These are two different stories. The dead Amil story is different. The cow story is different. The cow story is different. I was looking for that maybe in Salaf, in previous ulama, in previous generations, some ulama, they have said the same thing as Mawlana Hussain Ali, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, the Sheikh of my Sheikh, he has said. So I found it there in the tafsir of Imam Nasafi in Madarik Al-Tanzil. His tafsir is Madarik Al-Tanzil. And for Hanafi school of jurisprudence, that's an authentic tafsir. Madarik Al-Tanzil. So in Madarik Al-Tanzil, I found it. He said the same thing, that these are two different stories. That is not one in the same story. The dead one story is different. The cow story is different. Cow, it was ordered to get slaughtered to show them that cow is not God. Yes, Egyptian concept is totally wrong. Got it? If that is God, how you slaughtered it? Because God could never be slaughtered. Yes, and if slaughtered, so it means that's not cow. Or that's not God. That's not God. Got it? That's not God, that's guy. In Urdu we call it guy. Got it? In English, guy means one thing, in Urdu, guy means another thing. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِ And remember when Musa said to his people, إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِنْدِيدْ أَلَّا يَا مُرُكُمْ آرْدَرْزْ يُوْ أَنْ تَزْبَحُوا بَقَرَا تُو سْلَاتَرِ كَاو قَالُوا دَي سَدْ أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا Do you make fun of us? Cow, that is God. How we can catch God and slaughter it? So do you make fun of us? قَالُوا وَتَتَّقِذُنَا عُزُوَا قَالَا يَسِدْ أَغُوذُ بِاللَّهِ عَيْسِكْ Refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَائِلِينَ From being among the wrongdoer or the foolish people making fun. I'm not making fun of anything. I'm not making fun of anything. Those who are making fun of others, later on they become fun themselves. Yes? Then they become fun themselves. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you saw someone crippled, yes? If you saw someone disabled in a bad situation, so you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Alhamdulillah illazi aafani an zalik wa fazzalani ala kasiri man khalaqa tafzeela Praise be to Allah who protected me from such like situation. Who protected me from such like situation. 
But Prophet Sallallahu said, say in such a way that it may not be hurt to the person concerned. It may not, because you will harm his feeling then. You will be harming his feeling then. And he say it in such a way that it will not hurt to that guy. Got it? Because maybe he will be thinking that this guy is making a fun of my disability. Yes or not? He is making a fun of my disability. And, uh, yes, subhanallah, this is the weakness of uh, humans. And I'm very sorry, the weakness of Muslims, that they are making fun of others. And some of them, they have fame for that. Yes, giving names to others. Giving. And they themselves, they claim to be very respectable in the community. That I am a dignified person. But that dignified person, he is making fun of others. Very openly. Yes. So he used to call someone, if he has a little bit problem in his eye, he's a benga. He's a benga. If somebody a little bit fat, oh, they're motu. Yes, and not motu only, bensa. Yes. Even regarding the wives of others, and I tried to stop him many, many times, but that's his problem. May Allah subhanahu wa forgive and forbid, may Allah forgive and forbid, may Allah forgive and forbid. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْمُرُكُمْ Indeed Allah orders you أَن تَزْبَحُوا بَقَرَىٰ To slaughter a cow قَالُوا They said أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَىٰ Yes, one guy he was in very difficult time before his death. Yes, another one he was sitting with our sheikh. And he had enmity with that guy who died after that much difficulty and on deathbed for a long time and so that guy said to Shaykh that, oh, that guy, Allah punished him very well. Allah punished him very well before his death. So Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ali, he looked at him very nicely. He looked at him very nicely and he asked him, and I think that you passed through. I think you passed through. Means that you already died and you have not faced that. You already died, and you are not faced that. So the guy picked up the button. He said, Shaykh, forgive me. He said, ask Allah to forgive you. Because you do not know what will happen to you before your death. In future, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do to you while you are making a fun of another one, or why you are rejoicing his difficulty. Maybe that difficulty and hardship are for, for his good. Because in a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, if Allah wants to forgive someone, but he does not have that many hasanat and good deeds, yes, to get forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him to difficulties. Allah put him to, to difficulties. And that difficulties, it uh, erases his uh, evil deeds and then Allah forgive him. That's a fine tuning. That's what? That's a fine tuning. Through those difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing tuning to his engine. Got it? are tuning to him, so he may get forgiven. Got it? We are weak. So we say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have a lot of sin, but don't put, put us to difficulty. Forgive our sins, you are our master, you are our Lord. You can do that without difficulties. Yes? And if difficulty come, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then give us stability and patience. Give us stability and patience. Give us stability and passion. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once he was talking about sabr and patience and its reward. And he said, Innama yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bighayri hisab. Indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give reward to the sabirin and to the patient and stable people without counting, countless reward. Whatever you want, take it. Whatever you want, take it. Where you are, wherever you want to live in Jannah, yes, have it. How much land you want to have in Jannah? Go ahead. How many castles you want to have in Jannah? Go ahead and take it. That's called Bighir Hisab. Got it? Without Hisab, without counting. So when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was talking about reward of sabr in such a way. So one Sahabi, very nice man, but he was a big one, very simple man. Yes. So he went there to the corner after the bayan and he was saying, Allahumma alhimni as sabra. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me patience. Oh Allah give me patience. Oh Allah give me patience. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him. 
he came here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him that you are asking for patience and sabr aw waqad usibta aw waqad usibta you are in some difficulty you are in some hardship you are facing some hardship and difficulty that's why you are looking for what for patience he said la izan no i don't have any difficulty so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled at him that it means that you are looking for difficulty <laughs> because you are asking for patience and patience will come after difficulty this is not the case when you have the difficulty at that time say oh allah give me patience qal ud'u lana rabbaka they said ud'u lana rabbaka qal upon your lord you bayyin lana qal upon your lord for us you bayyin lana to make plain to us maya what it is the slaughtering of cow what it is or what type of cow that is qala musa alayhi salatu was salam said innahu yaqulu verily allah says innaha baqaratun it is a cow la farizun neither too old wala bikrun nor too young that's a in medium age that's what in medium age awanum bain azalika but it is in between the two fa falu ma tumarun so do what you are commanded qalu they said ud'u lana rabbaka qala pan you are lord for us you bayyin lana ma launwa to make plain to us its color that what color it has the cow what color it has you bayyin lana ma launwa that what color that cow has قال هي سيد ان له يقول الله سيز ان لها بقره ان ديد ديد سكاو صفراو ديت از يلو فاقع لونوا برايت ان اتس كلر ديت از برايت يلو ديت از برايت يلو فاقع لونوا تسر الناظرين ات بليزنج تو ذا بي هولدر اند تو ذوز هو ويل بي لوكينج ابون ذات كاو ات ويل بليز ذيم قالوا سو دي سيد ادعوا لنا ربك قال فارس يور لارد يبين لنا تو ميك ات بلين تو اس ما هي وات ات از ان البقره تشاب علينا ويرلي تو اس ال كاوزار الايك ال كاوزار alike are similar wa inna insha allah la mutadun and if allah wills we will be guided to that cow qala so musa alay salam said in lahu yaqulu allah says in laha baqaratun it is a cow la zalulun neither trained to till plow p l o u g h plow that is not a trained cow to till or plow yes in lahu yaqulu in laha baqaratun la zalulun that is neither a train to till the, the soil wala tasqil harsa nar water the field musallamatun that is a sound cow la shiyata fiha no other color except bright yellow qalu so they said al ana jaita bil haqq now you have brought the truth fa zabahu so they slaughtered it wa ma kadu yafalun do they were near to not doing it and in a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says kam kanu yatlubun al baqarata 40 sanatan they found that cow they cow they cow they were looking far for almost 40 years because if that was a yellow cow but that was a trained to till another condition was that that's not a trained cow if that's a yellow cow that was too old or too young and another condition was neither too old nor too young so that's why they were looking for that cow and ibn abbas narrates a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that one pious guy he was passing away so he made a will he made a will that i have left a small baby cow female in the close by delta and forest so the son of mine when he will become adult so he should go there even though the cow until that time it would have become 
Alf will have become wild. That will be very difficult for him to catch it. Yes? But he should call upon that cow. Ya Rabba Ibrahim, etini be bakarati. Ya Rabba Ibrahim, Munir, etini be bakarati. O the Lord of Ibrahim, bring me my cow. So that cow will be running towards him. He will hold it and then he should sell it for his own needs and necessities. So when he became adult, his mother told him that you were small and your father has left a yellow cow. That was a small baby cow in the close by forest. So go there. He said, Mom, how can I catch? Because that will be a wild cow now. Living for so many years in forest, not used to human. So he said that you should call upon the cow. As your father said, Ya Rabba Ibrahim, etini bi bakarati. O the Lord of Ibrahim, bring me my cow. So when you will call upon the cow, so the cow will come, you will catch it, and you will take it to the bazaar, and you will sell it. So he went to the forest, and he called upon the cow. He called upon the cow. So his mother told him that you should sell it for that much money. You should sell it for that much money. Satan came to him in shape of an old man that I was looking for such a cow. For how much you will sell it? So he said, for seven dinar. He said, I can give you ten. He said, no. For seven dinar. So he said, I can give you twenty. He said, no. For seven dinar. He said, I'm giving you more and you are not accepting it. So he said, because my mother told me to sell it for seven dinar. I cannot disobey the order of my mom. <coughs> so then the old man told him that don't sell it now. Take it to your house. Consult your mom. Somebody will approach you. How much money you will be asking for? They will give it to you. So when he took the cow back to his home, after a while, these people of Israel, they approached that house, asked for the cow. This is trained? No, this is wild. Yes, age, neither too old nor too young. Color, bright yellow. Color? bright yellow. So they said, oh, this is the same cow which is mentioned by Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So they say, for how much you are selling it? So they said, we will be selling it if you will fill up the skin of this cow with gold. So they said, okay, we will do that. They slaughtered it and they filled it with gold and gave it to the mother and to the son. Got it? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kam kanu yatlubun al-baqarata arba'ina sana. They were looking for that cow for almost 40 years. And after 40 years they found it. Wa id qataltum nafsan. And remember, qataltum nafsan when you killed a man. Faddaratum feha. And you fell in dispute among yourselves. Wallahu mukhrajum ma kuntum taktumun. But Allah brought forth that which you were hiding. So you were hiding that you killed him for inheritance, for his wealth. You the first cousins. Now you are looking for the killers asking Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam told them that my Allah says, they touch his body with another part of his body. Touch his body with another part of his, in the same way, in the same way, the tissues will touch each other on the day of judgment with the blow of Israfil, and the people will raise up from their graves and from their qubur. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed a living example of that day of judgment that you should touch the body of this dead one, Amil. His name was Amil. With another part of his body, he will raise up alive and he will tell you that who killed me. Got it? So as I mentioned, that according to Mufassirin, the story of cow and Amil is one and the same. But according to other Sheikh Sheikh and to Imam Nasafi, these are two different stories. 
These are two different story to other mufassirin. They said they touch his dead body with a piece of meat of the same cow. Yes. So he will raise alive and he will he will rise alive and then he will tell you who killed me. No, the cow is a different story. That was to tell them that cow is not a god. If that is a god, how you people slaughtered it? But the case of Amil, that's a different one. For example, touch his face with his palm. So he will become alive and he will tell, he will tell you that who killed me. So when they did the same too, so he raised up and he said that these cousins of mine who are standing here, they killed me. Got it? Why the Qatar Tum Lafsan and remember when you killed Nafsan Emil Faddara Tum Fia and fell into dispute amongst yourself regarding that crime. Wallahu Mukhrajum Ma Kuntum Taktumun and Allah brought forth that which you were hiding. Fakulna so we said Idribu Bibadiha, strying him man the dead. The dead man, Fazribu, with a piece of his body. With a piece of his body. Kazalika Yuhillahul Mauta in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give life to the dead. Now look, the way we explained it, this ayah further elaborate that. Because on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be touching the dead with the piece of cow. You know what I'm saying? Not with the pizza. The tissues will touch each other and ultimately they will become alive. Fakulna so we said Idribu Bibadeha. Strike him mean the dead man with a piece of his own body. Kazalika Yuhilla Hulmauta in the same way Allah will bring to life the dead. Wa Yurikumayate and he is showing you his signs. La Allah Kumta Kilun so you may understand. Summa kasat kulobukum. Bandel but then after that visible miracle. Then after that visible miracle summa kasat qulubukum your hearts were hardened mim baad zalika after that visible miracle fayakal hijara and it became as stones aw ashad qaswa are more harder harder than stones wa inna min al hijara and indeed there are some stones lama yatafajjur min hulan har out of which rivers gush forth wa inna min and as there are some stones lama yashak which split asunder fayakhrujumil hulma so that water flows from them wa inna milha and some of the stones lama yabitumil khashyatillah which fall down of the mountains because of the fear of Allah wa man lao bighafilil ghamma tamalun and Allah is not unaware of what you are doing so by this example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala classified humans to two three categories number one that one who listened to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gets benefits only for himself. He is getting benefit for himself. Number two, that one who listens to the book of Allah and he gives a little bit benefit of that to others. And the third category are those who learned the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are just like ocean of the uloom of Quran for others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are stones where from the rivers are gushing forth. That is the first category. There are those where from a little bit water is coming out, small fountains. And there are those stones which is falling down from the mountain or from the hilltop because of the fear of Allah. So the first one is the example of those who have got benefit of the book of Allah and giving a lot of benefit to others. They are just like, uh, yes, running oceans. And there are those who are giving a little bit benefit of the book of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're just like a small fountain. And there are those who are getting benefit for their own selves. But, so it means the fourth category, 
who learned the book of Allah and they have never got any benefit there from. So that is not a category to be considered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasuli Muhammadin wa ali wa sahabi ajma'in. Allahumma rabbana alhamdulillah bil Qur'an zunad al-kilna bil Qur'an ma nasina wa alimna min wajailna wa salatu wa ta'ala ilwana al-nahar fa Allah khairul hafizah wa alhamdulillah rahimin.